Well, good day, our friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, and the beautiful Katie. Hello. And today, we are in Woodstock, Definitely. Illinois, which doubles as Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, in the great movie Groundhog Day. We're gonna be starting with some of the filming locations that are around the square, and then we'll go over and see the house. There are a ton of them right here in town, most of them, actually. So when they first enter in the van to cover Groundhog Day, Phil and the news crew, they come driving right up this road. Stop here. And then continue driving. Around this section and go directly across the street to there so right here on the corner is mary's which was katie what was this in the movie i believe it was called the tip top cafe that is right so we see this a ton of times in the movie but kind of from this angle because right down here this little corner we usually see it right here because Phil is always coming around the corner here and this is where the homeless man is always asking him for money. So they actually memorialize that with a plaque here on the wall. But it says Ned's Corner because if you remember as soon as Phil starts walking towards us, <laughs> Needle Nose Ned, Ned the Head, <laughs> comes from right here. Phil! Phil Connors! Phil? Hey, Phil? Phil? Phil Connors? Phil Connors, I thought that was you. Uh, how you doing? Why, I thought that was you. <laughs> it's me, Needle Nose Ned, Ned the Head. <laughs> Come on, buddy. You remember me from high school? Yep, right here is where Ned sees him and always runs over to him. So that also means when Phil's walking this way trying to get away from Ned, you know, whenever I see an opportunity now, I charge it like a bull. Ned the bull, that's me now. You know, I got friends of mine who live and die by the actuarial. They're going this direction. He's saying, you remember me? I dated your sister Mary Pat until you told me not to. Did that whistling belly button trick during the talent show. <laughs> He's like, did you go pro with that thing or what, Ned? <laughs> so when Phil's trying to get away, he steps in what would have been the puddle right there, where Katie is at. It's been great seeing you, Needlehead. Take care. <laughs> Watch out for that first step, it's a doozy. Now they changed it, they told me, if you notice here, the, uh, the sidewalk changes. Right yeah, the original sidewalk actually ended there. <laughs> and so, they had cobblestone there, like you see here, and they said they had to remove those pieces every day and put them back in every day while they were filming so that it wasn't a uh, hazard for anyone. But they have his footprint right there where he always stepped in it. They told me they would have him go inside the restaurant right here and he would put a plastic bag on his foot and then put that inside a sock, inside the shoe, and he would always step into that so that his foot wouldn't get wet. But then he works his way across the street to Gobbler's Knob. I knew she would love this. So since we're at Mary's, why don't I show you where Phil and Rita were sitting inside the movie. It's now changed, the restaurant's a little different, but I can still show you where it was. So Phil and Rita were sitting right here where this little corner is and Phil has this window to his back I like to see a man of advancing years throwing caution to the wind. It's inspiring in a way. My years are not advancing as fast as you might think. That's when he's saying that he thinks he's a god because <laughs> he knows everything and everyone and knows what's going to happen. So this is a much different restaurant than it was in the movie. It's real nice. Just put that anywhere, pal. <laughs> and laid out completely differently, but yeah, I remember he's walking around saying, this is so-and-so, she wants to go to Paris, this is so-and-so. Yep, this is where it happened. 
and that's where he stepped in the hole. So we'll, we'll shake off our foot like Phil does and go right over here to when he's joining all the festivities to do his news report. Woodstock Square. Apparently they didn't want to use Punxsutawney because Harold Ramis was the director and he just thought that he wanted a town square feel and Punxsutawney just wasn't the quite the town square he wanted so. Phil actually walks this side of the gazebo towards that direction when he goes to meet with them but he's actually going over here which is where Gobbler's Knob was. So if we walk over in that direction, there's also a plaque over there. Right here at this bench, they have a little Gobbler's Knob plaque. Because Gobbler's Knob was set up right here in this corner. Hey Phil! Phil, over here! Where have you been? It was horrible. A giant leech got me. Right here. So Phil and Rita would have kind of been off to this side doing their news report. Yeah, they're hicks, Rita. So, you sleep okay without me? You tossed and turned, didn't you? And that probably looks familiar because when they first drive in, that's where the van stops. And Phil says, I'm not gonna stay here. Going over here to the town opera house. So we see their van pull right over here, pull right up. Rita, I can't stay here. And then Phil gets out and looks and he says, I'm not staying here. I stayed here a few years ago and it was a flea bag. She says, no, I got you a very nice bed and breakfast over on Cherry Street. I'm gonna stay here. Larry's just dropping me off. I booked you in a very nice bed and breakfast on Cherry Street. Great. But we do see this later in the movie because right up there, that circle at the top is where Phil jumps when he thinks Groundhog Day is never gonna end. And he tries to jump, kill himself, then he actually does it right there down to where we are. I love the way they have it decorated. And they have a great groundhog down here that Katie noticed. Great eye, sweetheart. Yeah, how could you miss it? What a good looking guy, huh? That actually leads us to another filming location over here. So now we're located on the opposite side of where Gobbler's Knob was. They had it all set up over on that side. So we're going over here to a parking space over here at the opening. They're getting ready for some sort of little holiday festival here. Nice reindeer. But actually where we're going is right there. That's where they put the groundhog and Phil just gets right in the driver's seat <laughs> and steals the groundhog, drives off. Now if we go a little further this way, we actually have a filming location in here. So we're going in the public house, if it's open. So this is the bar that we always see them in before it gets to the dance. There's a plaque that says I always drink to world peace. Remember that scene? Uh-huh. So this is the bar. So, what are the chances of getting out today? The van still won't start. Larry's working on it. Yeah, this was the bar in the movie. Well, they're always drinking where he learns what she what she likes to drink. The sweet vermouth, the twist. In the movie you feel like the ballroom is actually here, but it's not. It's over at the local moose. So right here on the cobblestone is where the elderly lady's car breaks down and Phil just stops and starts helping him fix it and they think he's a member of the motor club. Nothing, ma'am. I had the tie around the jack. Just be comfortable, all right? Oh, look! We have another groundhog sighting. 
Groundhog Day! And then we actually have another filming location right beside here. So we see Phil over here waiting. Dog bark. Because this is when he's doing the bank robbery. So the Brinks truck is parked right here. And he counts all the timing and everything for them to come out with the money and then he walks right up and takes the money from the Brinks truck. Exit Herman, walk on into the bank, exit Felix, and stand there with a not so bright look on your face. Can I have a roll of quarters? Quarters, three, two, <laughs> and then like I said, he fixes the ladies tire right over here. They use so much of this. We're still in town square. And now we're gonna go back over to kind of where we started. So here we have the Woodstock Theater. This is where <laughs> Phil is dressed up like Clint Eastwood. She's like, I thought we were going to a costume party, Phil. <laughs> It's like, call me Bronco. And then this is the alley that the old man dies in when he keeps trying to save the old guy. Right over here by the theater, this is one of the other main things we wanted to see. They have an alley where they put a tribute to Groundhog Day and some of the other people and movies from this town. How cool is that? There's Phil. Needle Nose Ned, Ned the Head, Woodstock Willie, Orson Welles, of course, grew up here. Isn't that cool? Oh yeah, 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 the guy from uh, Dick Tracy is also here. The guy who created Dick Tracy, they have a mural to him down here. They had a theater here in town, Katie, and they have a oh, tribute to a lot of the famous people that performed at that opera house we were looking at were Phil Jumps, Geraldine Page, Tom Bosley, Mr. Cunningham himself, yeah. Rooney, Arlo John Guthrie, Adamson. Gomez Adams, and then yeah, like I said, the man who created Dick Tracy, Chester Gould, and Woodstock Willie. How cool. And it says Phil and Rita right there on the side. I love it. And a statue to Orson Welles. So small I almost didn't recognize him. That's definitely him. What a cool town, huh? What do you think of this town? It's so cool. I can't believe all they were able to do here and it's so picturesque to be here around the holidays. They don't even mention right where we started is a scene from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles where they're waiting for That's a right. ride right there yes. on that same corner. <laughs> so now we're gonna walk back to the square up here and show you a couple more things that were filmed up in there. So I showed you us walking by the gazebo, but the gazebo is actually in the movie. So this is in the movie we see Phil and Rita in having the first winter dance or whatever that is. That's what they're calling it, the, uh, the winter dance. But we see them in their slow dancing and everything. It's a nice scene. They actually have a plaque notating that. And then during the snowball fight scene, you can see this, this statue. So they had the snowball fight over here. Uh, I haven't done this since I was a kid. Me neither. It's fun. So now let's go see the house. We've seen most of the things around here. That beautiful bed and breakfast from the movie does exist and you can stay here. I have done it. It's awesome. Phil's window would have been the very top window up here. Of course, this is where he is sleeping and constantly that alarm goes off with 
Sonny and Cher playing and he keeps reliving that same day over and over. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. They didn't actually film the scenes inside the house, just the exterior. So they show the exterior like this and then at the very, very end, of course we see Bill Murray and Andy McDowell running out of the house together. And they have the doors open so we can go up and a plaque. How excited are you? <laughs> this is the shot that Phil, this when he- the street when he looks down from the window, right? Yeah. And when he comes out and he sees the piano teacher right here and he's like, what's everybody doing? She's like, it's Groundhog Day. He goes, it's still just once a year, right? <laughs> well, her house is that blue one right over there. That's where he took his piano lessons. But the people that own this place, they are so cool. If it's the same people as I met, they, uh, they lived here when the movie was filmed, moved away. And then when the house came up for sale, they said, this is just a sign we should come back and be the custodians of this house. So we see Bill Murray and Andy McDowell come lovingly running out of here down these steps. That's when he says, why don't we move here? We'll rent to start. What do you think, you wanna move here? <laughs> Not a bad place, is it? <laughs> And they go running off. He actually lifts her over the gate. It's like being in love. There's a smile on my face. The movie ends with them going down the street. But just a couple of years ago, they did a commercial, like a Super Bowl commercial, of Phil reliving Groundhog Day. And he came back here and they filmed it here. And they were telling me that he was a very nice guy when he was here, that he was actually inside the house and everything so they could film it because they filmed it inside the house. Beautiful place. I love seeing that they still have it to where you can stay here. All right, Katie, what did you think of Woodstock? Did you enjoy today? I did. This is such a picturesque little town and it's neat how you can see shot for shot where a lot of these things were filmed. We didn't show you everything today because I did a pretty detailed one before, but the only building that is gone that they told me was the gas station. You see Phil trying to make a call asking about if there's a line for celebrities in an emergency or whatever and he gets hit in the head with a with shovel. shovel. Yeah, they said that that place was pretty run down and that's gone. I wanted to show her this place because I just love that movie and this place so much so I'm glad we got to do it. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time from Woodstock, Illinois. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.